Welcome. Uh, this afternoon, we are very lucky to have as our, our second guest. Last week, we interviewed Coach Ryan Miller, the head boys basketball coach at Providence High School. Uh, we have the newly named head coach of the Providence football team, Daniel McDonald, and we thought it would be a good time to bring him on to introduce himself uh, to the Providence community and have a short little discussion about what he hopes to bring uh, to the school. So, Coach, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. We're, we're happy to have you. I've heard a lot of good things. Um, first of all, why don't we just kind of start off, if you would like to introduce yourself uh, to the community and kind of say anything you'd like to say, both from a pro personal background, a professional background, wherever you want to go with that. Well, first of all, I'm honored to be a part of the Providence tradition and uh, grateful for the opportunity to build upon it. Um, my personal background, I'm married. My wife and I have been married for eight years. Uh, she's from Madison, Indiana. And we have two sons, Landon and Cruz. Landon's six and Cruz is four. Uh, we're members of St. Athanasius here in Louisville. And what really attracted me to the Providence job was, A, the tradition that the football program and the school have, and B, the opportunity to, to coach Catholic kids, to teach Catholic kids. I, I really value uh, the Catholic education and the experience and, and accountability and discipline and, and religious teaching that come along with that. Excellent. Uh, professional background. Uh, obviously, I'm coming from Mail. I've been the defensive coordinator there for three years. Uh, in my three years there, we were a state champion in 2018 and a state runner-up in 2019. Um, we, we always placed in the top two in scoring defense. Uh, so that was a great experience for, for me. And um, I learned from the best coach in Kentucky on how to run a program and how to build an elite culture. So I'm really excited about the opportunity to uh, to bring some of that to Providence as well. Awesome. Uh, you mentioned culture. What what kind of outside of just we're not really going to talk wins and losses here, but what are mm -hmm. you hoping to bring uh, to the program to instill in the young <clears throat> men who are going to be your the backbone of your of your team? Um, what kind of values and qualities are you looking to bring? Right. So our three core values for our program. Uh, the first one is going to be character. Uh, character first, and I believe that character is who you are when no one's watching. So we want to build the accountability in our guys to understand that, you know, the decisions I make, if I make the right decision when somebody's watching, when I know there's somebody uh, holding me accountable, that's one thing. But I need, I need to make the right decisions and be accountable to myself when no one's watching. That's my true character. Uh, the second t core value we're going to have is team before self. So, yeah, the personal goals are, are, are important to have. But ultimately, I'm going to do what's best for my team. And that kind of carries over into life as well. I, as a father and as a husband, I'm constantly, you know, my, it's my team before myself. It's my family before myself. As a coach, it's been team before self. Uh, I put the values and the goals of the team before my own individual values and goals, or goals rather. Um, you know, so as a professional, in the, when you get out into the, into the professional world, you know, you put, the, you put the values and the goals of the team before your own personal goals. That's selflessness, right? Yeah. That's, that's kind of one of the core principles of the Catholic faith as well, selflessness and, and, and caring for others. And then our third value, um, this translates to everything in life, in your, in your personal life, your professional life, and then on the football field as well. Our third core value is going to be relentless effort in everything we do. In every, every endeavor we undertake, relentless effort. And then as far as team culture, I really believe in the idea, um, it's the burn the boats mentality. And where that comes from, it's an old war adage. Uh, the story goes that um, way back when, I don't know the year, forgive my his, lack of history knowledge, uh, Hernan Cortez was tasked by Spain to conquer the Aztec empire. And if you know anything about the Aztec empire, it was this huge spanned over, you know, a whole continent, basically this huge empire. And they said, Hernan, you're going to take these 600 guys and you're going to conquer this entire continent. So he sails over with his 600 guys. They make a, they make a beachhead, they land. And his guys kind of look out over the Aztec empire and he can tell they're already getting ready to go. They've got an escape strategy. They're, they're saying, we got to get out of here. We got no chance. He gives the order to burn the ships. And the idea behind that is if there's no exit strategy, there's, there's no what if. There's no, well, what if we fail? No, there's none of that. Success is our only option. We're going all in, and we're not, there is no exit strategy. We're not worried about that because we're going to succeed. 
So our whole team culture is that burn the boats mentality. Yeah, we're going to be out man every now and then, and, and our numbers are low. So what? It's our 11 against their 11. Burn the boats. I appreciate that approach. That's, you know, that's kind of the energy and approach I think that, that we need as a mindset of school, as you mentioned, because we, you know, from an enrollment level, it is a little lower than we'd want it to be. Um, but, you know, with that kind of mentality, I mean, when it comes down to it, yeah, you're right. It's the year 11 versus their 11 and best team's going to come out on top. Mm -hmm. um, coming into a new place, obviously we're in a kind of a, a weird time right now with the reason why we're doing this electronically and not in person. Um, if you wouldn't mind just kind of talking a little bit about what you've done to try to reach out to families and team mm -hmm. and just do what you can with the limitations that, that we have on society at the moment. Uh, so I have my, my already registered freshmen that I'm reaching out to trying to, you know, trying to prop them up a little bit and get them interested in Providence football yeah. or what Providence football is going to be. Um, I sent out a mass email to those guys. I'm going to be sending texts and, and calls and everything else in the next few days. Um, with the current members of the team that I have, everything's been either via text or huddle. Um, and huddle is our online video platform. It's, it's kind of like social media for a football team, really, when you think about it. Ideally, I'd be, you know, having meetings with those guys and we'd be lifting and everything else, but you know, school's closed. Well, what can we do? So I've sent out a workout for them to do every day. Hopefully they're getting it done um, because that's really going to pay dividends for the season, assuming we have a season, right? I don't know where this COVID is going to take us. Uh, I don't think anybody knows. No. Um, and then I've got some names of some guys who are already in the building who should be playing football. Um, so I've been reaching out to those guys. Uh, I'm just telling them, like, football football's going to be exciting at Providence. Football's going to be fun. Football's going to be the cool thing to do. Um, kids have a lot of options these days. Yeah. You know, and, and, and parents are allowing them to, to quit a sport, to drop a sport, to not try a sport, because there are a lot of other things that are much easier to do. You know, it's a lot easier just to pick up the controller and go play Fortnite. Or, you know, it's a, it's a lot easier just to spend your time, you know, going fishing or whatever. You know, so so as football coaches, basketball coaches, baseball coaches, we've, we've got to give kids things or we, or we got to do things with our teams that make it worth their while. You know, I, I can't – I played I played football and baseball in high school, and I played baseball in college. And I can't remember any final scores, really. When, if you press me, I could, I could think back to, you know, okay, we beat that team eight to four or, or whatever. But for the most part, I don't remember final scores. I might remember a few home runs I hit and a few touchdown passes here and there or whatever. But what I do remember most from my college days and from, from my time as a high school athlete are the, the team, the, the, the travel in college, right, going on those road trips to play teams in Tennessee and Georgia and Florida and Alabama and wherever else. So I remember those road trips with my teammates. From high school, I remember the time um, – you know, as a football team, we went out and had a basketball tournament with a football. You know, that something weird that we did just to just to do something goofy and different and fun. You know, and I can remember those relationships and that rapport I had built with my coaches. So ultimately, we have to we have to do those things with our with our teams to where they have those memories ten years down the road. And speaking of ten years down the road, I really believe that our job as coaches, yeah, wins and losses are important. They wouldn't keep score if they weren't important. But ultimately, with, with Providence football, we're going to put our guys on a 10-year plan. So we gauge our success as a program based on 10 years from the time you graduate from Providence. What kind of husband are you? What kind of father are you? What kind of citizen are you? What kind of employee or employer are you? If you're successful in those areas, then we've done our job as a football program because we've turned you from a boy into a man and instilled the values in you to make you a successful person or a successful man. That's great advice. I mean, that, that's, I, I can, I have the same memories. I, I played baseball in high school, baseball in college. And, you know, if you asked me to go back on scores, I couldn't do it either. But I do remember those spring trips. I do remember the, all the times we, we bonded in other ways. And that's, that's really the memories that, that I've got today when I think back to, to my time uh, at Bellarmine and playing baseball. Just, you know, the interpersonal relationships and the friendships that I've still got today with those people. That's, you're right. That's what matters. Um, as, a, as a deanery principal, um, for anyone not watching, my name is Steve Bile. I should have introduced myself. 
I'm the principal at Our Lady Perpetual Help. Um, we have a youth program, a youth football program, a seventh and eighth grade team, which comprises of, of all the various schools in our deanery. Um, if you wouldn't mind kind of giving me your thoughts and approach on what kind of, what kind of strategies and, and outreach that, that we need to develop as a deanery to make mm -hmm. those kids playing for the junior high team feel like they're part of the province football program already. So my goal is to, is to metaphorically, of course, build a wall around the deanery. There's no reason I, that we should be losing kids to St. X and Trinity. We've got the high school, the Catholic high school right here in Clarksville. So I don't want to, I don't want to hear that I'm losing kids to Trinity or St. X or to sales or to the public schools. No, you're, you're a deanery kid. You're going to Providence, but I've got to be present with the, with those players and with those kids. And they've got to know who I am and what Providence football and what Providence high school is all about to where they, they feel that connection to say, yeah, I'm going to Providence. I'm going to be a pioneer. So I can make one promise, and that's, that's that at, at the deanery football games, you'll see me or a member of my staff every week. And we'll be present at those games. We'll be talking up Providence. Um, I, would like to, I would like to build the culture that as a deanery football program, you're a, you are the junior extension of Providence football. And... <clears throat> What that means is you look like many Providence when you're on the field. So we're running similar systems. We, we, we're running similar plays. We're teaching similar tackling techniques. We're, we're teaching similar technique for our linemen and our, and our skill guys and everything in between. Now it's going to be a watered down version. But when you look at, at deanery football, you say, dang, they're running a lot of the same plays Providence is. And if you look at my background is in Kentucky. If you look at a lot of the successful Kentucky programs, like Boyle County, for example, Scott County, from the time those kids can walk, they're running that team system. So that by the time they're ninth graders, they say, oh, that, that plays easy. We've been running that since we were in third grade. You know, or, okay, I know what that position does because I played that when I was in seventh grade. We use the same terminology. So I want to build a unified deanery football program that funnels kids into Providence football. Um, and with that, the, the, the outreach into the deanery schools is important as well. I'm gonna, uh, some of my teaching schedule is gonna allow me that flexibility to get out there into the schools and to be visible and to, and to talk kids up and to build that rapport with the students um, that we so desperately need. Yeah, and like you mentioned, it, it just comes back really to, to relationships. Even if you're, you focused a lot on kind of incorporating the, the football aspect and the plays and whatnot, but it starts mm -hmm. at the basic level, like you said, of being present and starting to form those relationships early so those kids can identify with your program and identify with the deanery, and, it, and that means identifying with Providence, and I think that's what all of us as principals and all of us in the deanery are trying to do in all aspects of, of trying to funnel our kids into the Catholic high school. As you mentioned, we have a Catholic high school, and we hope that all our kids are, are able to attend there, um, but it, it's, it comes down to relationships. You're 100% right. You know, I know that that tuition number is scary for a lot of people. Let's be honest about it. Um, you know, I, I came from a family where, you know, my parents could afford Catholic elementary, but then when it, when it came time to go to a Catholic high school, money was a bit of a problem, right? The directive I've been told or the directive I've been given is that if a kid wants to come to Providence, fill out the paperwork, get in that business office, and, and let's run some numbers and let's make this thing work. You know, so I don't, I don't want that tuition number to scare families away. You know, Indiana's a voucher state, and, and that's a blessing because in Kentucky, voucher is a cuss word. You, know, you say voucher uh, amongst some public school teachers in Kentucky, you know, you might, you might get a, a, you might, you know, you might get something thrown at you. <laughs> so the fact that Indiana's a voucher state is a positive. And then we, we have so many resources available at Providence to, to make that tuition number a little bit less of a burden on families. So my advice would be, even if you don't think you can afford it, run the numbers and let's see what happens. I would have the same advice. And again, you, you being out there and connecting early with families will hopefully make them all more interested in, in trying to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, Coach, um, I don't know if there's anything else you want to add, but I know everything I've heard um, about your hire from, from folks I trust, uh, they're very genuinely excited about what you're going to bring to the program, and I appreciate you taking a few moments to 
sort of virtually introduce yourself to the community. Um, I know some, a lot of people I'm looking forward to, to at least getting to hear your thoughts on some things, but I appreciate you taking the time to talk with us. And I know uh, I'd like to join all the others and welcome you to the deanery, welcome you to Providence. And I appreciate it. Looking forward to working with you. Can't wait to get started. Uh, at some point when life gets back to normal, I'd love to have a meet and greet with families. And obviously I want to meet my team in person again. You know, that's, that's kind of driving me nuts. I'm sitting here behind a computer all day, you know, working on stuff for the program and, and kind of doing my day job as well. Yeah. Um, ready to get started, man. I, I, the timing couldn't have been worse, but, you know, we'll get through it. Everybody will get through. We're in uncharted waters right now, but, you know, this is where, keep going back to it, but relationships and leadership matter. And when all this settles down, we know you're going to be there ready to start the program off right. So Can't wait. Uh, things are going to be exciting for Providence football again. Glad to hear it. Thank you, Coach. Thank you.